All right, y'all. Got a little project today. Got a stick here. And I got a little blade that came off of when I was napping. Um, I believe it was this chunk here. Yeah, right here is where it came off of. You can kind of see there. It came off of this section in here. And um, it's nice and thin and it's fairly straight. Um, and it's fairly flat this way. So we're going to make a hoku knife. Um, now I can't really find the history on this knife. Um, I'm going to try to do a little bit more digging. But basically what this is, is you clean up a stick and you split part of the way down or cut and mount this in the handle and make a knife out of it that way. So we're going to go ahead and give this a try. And I'm going to use stone tools for the whole process. Now this is one of the things that I've created. Uh, it's just a, a big flake and you can see that I've kind of cut some saw teeth into that and I just do that by taking another rock that happens to have a nice sharp edge and I come in here and I just grind those little notches in a little deeper. Alright y'all, um, I'm wanting to round these ends a little bit and instead of sitting here and carving away with a little piece of stone, we got a big chunk of Georgetown flint and um, there's a nice sharp edge here so I'm using this as a hand axe and kind of using it like this. It's pretty effective. Granted, I will have to do some fine tuning with the little pieces of flint, but this ain't doing too bad. I think my next project's going to be making a little hand axe. And I'm just hitting this little groove right here. That's what I'm hitting on. And it seems to be working okay. Alright, so that's roughly rounded and I'll clean it up some with a small little piece of flint. I'm going to do the same thing to this end and I'll get back to you here in a minute. Okay guys, I got my stick pretty well cleaned up and um, a couple things I did was I just took, I think, was it this flake or this flake? I think it was this flake here. And these are just byproducts of napping and I, I've got a tub full of them over here to my left. And I just basically just took this guy and just started scraping like that. And it started removing all kinds of bark and stuff. And then I came back in with this stone here. And this is kind of a stone I picked up out of a, a flower bed somewhere. And it's kind of a... I use it as an abrader. You can see the marks on it. And I just kind of rub this on here. Just to kind of smooth it out a little more. And kind of gloss it over. Um, but uh, I've got this end kind of cleaned up. Um, it's still a little rough. But uh, I did what I showed you with the uh, big chunk of Georgetown Flint, which is the stuff here. And um, chopped it down into a rough round. You can see the chop marks in it. And then what I do is I come back in with a, a flake. This is one I tend to prefer. I, get a, I keep cutting my fingers all up. You can see there I cut it pretty good. Um, get a glove on so I'm not cutting my fingers up anymore. 
and uh, grab a hold of this guy here and this edge here makes a nice cutting edge any of these edges do but you can see that all the edges are sharp so that's how I keep cutting myself and uh, basically I, I get a hold of this guy like this and I come in here and just kind of carve little chips off like that and it's really interesting working with stone tools how effective they actually are um, you would think that it would be slow and it is a lot slower than using metal tools but it's surprisingly effective and you get one that's dull you switch sides or you get another one um, this one's getting a little bit dull because I've been using it quite a bit so I just switch sides start shaving down pieces off of here and if I don't like this one I reach in my bin and get another one um, I got a, a big it used to be a, a cat litter pan it's a big one and um, one that the cat used to actually walk inside and um, that's what I usually keep between my feet when I'm napping and it collects all the debris and this is some of the debris and some of these I can end up turning into arrowheads or other tools but uh, a lot of times just the flakes like this you can see how much of a thin sharp edge that those leave they dull fairly quickly but and a lot of times if they're really thin they break off but you can see that I'm pulling some decent shavings off with these and so I'm just going around cutting kind of smoothing this end off and rounding it over a little bit and I can see that there's a crack in here and that's probably where I will mount this I'll probably take advantage of that and use my little saw here that I showed you in the beginning um, I'll probably sharpen the rest of this as a little saw and um, it's pretty sharp and these are fairly fragile but they're a dime a dozen I've got literally hundreds of them in this bucket and so I can come in here and saw a little groove wherever I want it you gotta be careful because you can cut yourself with this stuff I've done it quite a bit but uh yeah you just come in here and keep you know grind at it a little bit cut a groove um, and then we will fit our blade and this is again just a byproduct and this one's fairly straight fairly thin I think it'll work good for this and we're gonna mount it up in the stick with some pitch and we're gonna lash it with some sinew and it'll look similar to that there so we've got a little handle on a knife um, this is really ingenious because you're using this same basic technology and when this one breaks or wears out or gets dull you swap it out for a new one and it's fairly easy to swap out just warm this up over a fire to get the pitch soft get you know unwrap the sinew pop a new one in warm it back up get this pitch soft again and rewrap it and you're good to go and you've got a little nice little knife you can do the same thing with modern stuff like if you're out in the woods and you find an old tin can and you can knock the bottom out of it and you can make a sharp edge by grinding it on a rock or something um, you can do the same thing with something like that and make a little knife but it's it's called the hoku knife and from what i understand i asked a good friend of mine um, when i can't find information on something like this i will do my own research as much as possible but then i, I ask him because he's he's full of knowledge and i've got a lot of respect for him and um, he usually has an answer for me. Um, sometimes it's a simple answer, like a lot of cultures use this. It's a very simple tool that a lot of people used. So that's the answer I've got as far as the history on it. And, you know, you got a functional tool that way. So we're going to go ahead and keep working on this, and I'll get back to you when I get a little farther along. All right, guys. So you can see I've got the groove carved in here really deep. Um, and I carved that in with a combination of these stones that have different sharp edges. 
and just kept scrape, 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 scrape until I got it deep enough. Didn't take me that long, maybe 20 minutes. And I got my stone here. I accidentally broke it, trying to remove some off the back here. I put a couple tiny little notches in it, which are going to be probably hard to see. Um, and that's just for lashing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in here like this. We're going to pitch it. Um, I'm going to put pitch in the groove. Um, fill the groove full of pitch. And then um, pack it in around here too, so it's nice and tight. And then we'll lash it with some sinew. And we'll use those notches to help kind of pull it towards the handle. Um, and then we'll be done. And uh, it's going to be a nice, nice sharp knife for us. And again, you can undo this and take it out using new flake or whatever. Um, and yeah, you got a little knife, the Hoku knife. So we'll show you the next step, which is the pitch process here in just a second. Okay, so we're melting our pitch over a little alcohol stove here. I know that's not very Stone Age of me, but um, you don't want your pitch to catch on fire. You just want to melt it. Okay, so you got a good bit melted here. So I'm going to take this little stick here and I'm get some pitch on my stick. I'm going to put it in the crack on this stick. Just kind of fill that crack up. Okay, so now I got that full of pitch. I'm just going to warm it up a little. Careful not to flip it upside down so I don't get pitch in my stove. But just warm it up a little. And then we're going to take our flake. And we're carefully going to get that down in that pitch. And get it as deep as we can. Kind of wiggle it around so the pitch will go around it. And then... Take our stick and kind of smooth some of the pitch out around it, like that there. And put some in here. This is not the best pitch. This has um, got some debris in it, but the pitch that I'm I'm using it was not meant for um, this particular purpose. It was actually meant for a fire starter, so it had chunks of pine and all kinds of stuff in it to help start a fire. But uh, I used it for this. So as I go and do this, I have to kind of pick the chunks out. I will be collecting some better pitch, better quality pitch, and um, purifying it for purposes like this. Okay, I'm just going to warm this up a little bit. And that'll help the pitch kind of ease into all the nooks and crannies. Okay. Now I'm going to take some wood ash out of the fire. Get it all over my fingers. Sprinkle a little on here. And then just kind of dab. And that will press continually getting ash on my fingers will act like um, kind of like when a baker uses flour to keep the dough from sticking to his hands it's kind of the same principle and uh, just kind of pack this in while it's still a little warm make sure it's pressed into all the nooks and crannies
Okay. Cool. And we'll warm it up one more time. And that'll just get rid of the ash. Here we go. Now we just have to wrap it with some sinew, which I have over here in a jar soaking. Um, I'll go ahead and put this stove out because we don't need it right now. Snuff that out. This is what the sinew looks like. This is off an elk. It's the back strap. Um, normally it looks like just a big, it kind of looks like a corn husk um, when it's first processed. And um, then I, I break it down by wiggling it in my fingers and stuff. On this particular batch, there's a chunks that have some rough stuff back here that needs to be processed a little bit finer. But that's what it looks like. And then you soak it in water and it becomes very malleable and when it dries once you wrap it on whatever you're wrapping once it dries on there it becomes very tight and very secure so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the sticker end here I'm gonna lay it down on here like that and then I'm gonna Make sure I'm wrapping over that a few times. And then I'm gonna and lay that down. And get another piece. Okay, and then I will lay this over top of the last end, and I will just continue wrapping. And just wrap. And then at the end, I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop and then come back around and just half hitch this because once this dries this stuff will really shrink on itself and then just pull everything tight get it as tight as I possibly can there we go All right. and there we go there's our hoku knife and I will come back to you guys as soon as this a little bit dry a little bit more cured and show you the final product all right y'all final product here's the finished product here this is the sinew wrap and again this is not meant to be some ornate thing this is meant to be a usable usable tool and then when it's wore out or you know broke or whatever you unwrap the sinew, heat up the pitch, remove the flake, put a new flake in, and rewrap it, and just keep going. Um, it's a quick, dirty tool. Took me, with all the process of the stick, maybe an hour. Um, all things said and done. But I've got a piece of deer hide that I tanned a couple years ago, and um, we're gonna give this thing a little test. Get some cedar bark on there. So, here we go. This is some fairly thick. You can see there, cuts leather just fine. So, yeah, it would skin out a squirrel or a piece of small game or something like that. Um, it's a good little tool. And, yeah. 
So let me know what you think. If you have any comments or questions or other information that maybe I forgot, um, leave it down below. And until the next one, thanks for watching.